Hi, and we are live. Welcome, everybody, to our very first Hotelier Pulse Collective session for 2022. It's great to be back, and it's also great to be back by my by, by co-hosts, Mr. Pedro Calaco, who is the CEO and founder of Guest Centric and CEO of Great Hotels of the World. Pedro, great to have you joining us again. How are you? Very good. Happy New Year to everybody. I'm excited about what's going on. Actually. Excellent. Yes, let's hope that we're moving into a, uh, a more positive year this year. I think I have a feeling so far we are, even though yeah. uh, with everything that's moved, that's happened, we are going to be moving ahead. We're going to yeah. hit, hit on some of those points. We have great data to share. So Yeah, yeah. brilliant, brilliant. Also joining us, we have Mr. Pedro Ribeiro. And Pedro is the commercial director at Dom Pedro Hotels. And he's based out of Lisbon in Portugal. Pedro, lovely to have you joining us. How are you today? Good morning, Andre. Good morning, Pedro. I'm very Good morning. Happy. It's a pleasure <laughs> to be here this morning. It's great to have you with us. Thanks for taking the time and joining us. It's it's really great. All right, so let's get started. Uh, Pedro, you've got some slides that we want to get into. Uh, maybe I should actually start by saying Pedro C and Pedro R when we do this so that we don't get confused <laughs> yeah, with <is> Pedro. <laughs> This All right, very- so we're here to discuss the 21st edition of the Hotelier Pulse. Uh, Pedro, do you want to maybe start by giving us a, any o- overviews or any interesting points that you've noticed from there before we start getting into sure. the talking uh, points? Sure. So, and, and maybe let me frame this, right? So um, in terms of uh, what happened in 2021, obviously we had sort of a, a, a bad first half of the year with very low occupancy levels. And then we had a, a, a really nice recovery up through the summer and then uh, up um, to uh, November, and then Omicron came along, and and obviously threw a monkey wrench in the in the in the engine. And I think that's reflected in the Pulse report, which was done during the month of December. And what we saw um, in, in the Pulse report is is and let me actually jump here to maybe one of the the, the more important things is that actually what we saw in general was a decrease in confidence by hotel use. Right. So on a, you know, on this question that we ask on a, on a, on a consistent level of are you pessimistic or optimistic, people were moderately optimistic. It actually went down a little bit in December. And then uh, even though the expectation for 2021 was good, uh, there was a huge break in terms of when do you estimate your business will recover to the same financial position? Because most people that in October thought, oh, 2021 is, 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 is going to be better than 2020 or 29 or back to 2019. All that went down, and we saw an increase in or a decrease in confidence. And I think that's actually was driven by a lot of the travel restrictions that mostly Northern Europe put in place in in, in November December. And everybody, you know, talking talks about lockdowns and stuff like that. Um, that actually does not reflect what happened in 2021 which actually was sort of a reasonable, a reasonable year. If you look direct, oh, sorry, um, direct from August on was above 2019 levels. And even, you know, channels like booking.com were performing relatively well um, from August on. So, so I think that overall we had a reasonable 2021, uh, but there was a very, a very bad feeling at the end of 2022. At 2021, looking into 2022. So I think that's where people were prior to Christmas. That's where I was prior to Christmas. I'm going to say prior to Christmas break. I was very disappointed that the governments, because there was a new variant, um, immediately, ju- you know, pushed the panic button and mm. put all the restrictions in place. Mm. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you, Pedro. I think they did actually maybe hit, hit that button a little too soon because it's been now proven that the that variant, the Omicron variant, is not as severe as previous variants, and it's really considered a, 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 a heavy flu. Um, so, yeah, and, and Pedro, from your perspective, from your perspective, how have you seen that? Would you agree with this sentiment, or do you yes. see things perhaps otherwise? One hundred percent, I agree with Pedro. Yeah. Uh, in, in our group in Don Pedro Hotels and Golf Collection, uh, our uh, our idea is, is, is completely the same. So we had the reasonable 21. So from July in our resort hotels area, we have very good months. 
I can even say that October and November were, were the best October and November on the last 20 years. It was in, yeah. incredible the recovery we had in hotels in the Algarve and even in Madeira. Of course, Switzerland was a bit slower than the rest of the, the destinations. Uh, but uh, in Lisbon, we have a different product. We have a five-star hotel that is very connected with some segments like the mice and the corporate business that are not don't have to recover so quick like destinations where they have golf segment and leisure segment. So anyway, so 21 was we can say that was quite good for the expectations we 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 were we had and. Um, like Pedro said, in the end of the year, with all these measures that the government the government came out, came out, was really difficult to to plan the 2022. Nowadays, yeah. we are in, if, almost in the end of January. We we can look to 20, 2022 with other eyes. So uh, the trend is a bit like was 21, but uh, we believe that the occupancy will start much area that that start in 21. We have already good occupancy in our Algarve hotels starting middle of February. Um, even March, April, May, we have hotels already with 60% occupancy. So we are we are very optimistic what's going to happen in in 22. For for the moment, that's our that's how we feel, and uh, of course. Our goal is not to reach uh, the, the figures of 19, but I believe that 70, 80 percent of revenue we had in in 19, we we will be able to to reach in in 2022. Mm. Very good, Pedro. It's just popped up a slide here showing the the uh, response to direct bookings yeah, no, how so positive they were last I year. I wanted to highlight that actually, you know, so I'm completely in, in line with, with Pedro and. And, and if you look at overall 2021, while it was obviously significantly depressed from a, from a state's perspective from, uh, from 2019, we saw that actually, even with COVID, direct performed almost at 2019 levels. So much better recovery than any other channel. We had overall in our portfolio 56% market share for direct, which is just unbelievable. This is in, in euro terms or dollar terms, right? This is... Uh, uh, I'm talking about the revenue and, and we've, uh, you know, we've been talking to all our customers and some of them said, you know, we had better performance in 2021 than 2019, mostly resorts, I must say, because they got a lot more direct bookings and they did not have to pay the tour operator commissions. And therefore, you know, those 25, 30% commissions that they would pay, they did not pay. And so overall, in terms of net margin, they did, uh, they did better in 2021. I wanted to jump actually into 2022 because what we're seeing is that I have, you know, we have lots of reasons to be very optimistic. And if you look here, this is a week by week, um, you know, demand, um, demand chart. So we have a, a set of, I think, 580 hotels or so that are part of our, so that we compare the same hotels, right? And not the overall portfolio, the same hotels. And we can see here, you know, the, 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 the light blue line is 2019 and the demand. The, the dark blue line is last year. So I, I took 2020 out because I think 2020 is not relevant any longer for any comparisons. And we can see in orange what's happening in 2022. And I can tell you that this week is better than last week already. So, mm. so we are really seeing that things are coming back. We're seeing Americans coming back. We're seeing the British um, very coming back very hard. And actually, other than Italians and a few other nationalities in Europe, everybody's back at 2019 levels in terms of bookings. And I think that's really encouraging news um, in, in what we're seeing. Uh, the other thing, so the other thing that is really encouraging is that domestic is holding, but really the growth is in international bookings, right? And that's really what's going to drive, you know, occupancies in city center hotels, which are the ones that, you know, suffered mostly through the crisis. And I think we're starting to see that coming back. So, these are the demand is coming back, and I think that's a, that's a great um, a great indicator. A very good sign, absolutely. Um, and Pedro, from from your perspective, obviously, as as Pedro just uh, alluded to, twenty twenty one saw the massive increase in direct bookings that converted to stays. When comparing them to all the other channels, 
I'd like to ask from your perspective as an operator, why do you feel that that is? What is it particularly you think that, that drove that? Of course, we are, we are speaking about a different market that you used to be. So uh, our our share of domestic market was higher than, than normal. So uh, like uh, destinations like Yalgar, where the domestic market on a normal year would be around 20%. In the last year, we were figures around 50%. So, and the, the trend of the domestic market is to book direct. So, it's easier to target domestic market. It's easier to to target direct consumer when they, 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 they when they, it is a domestic a domestic consumer. So that's that's what happened on the on the last year. And uh, I believe that the trend is going to stay a bit. Domestic market is, is becoming uh, is becoming on the figures that they had last year, but international bar market is coming back. And of course, when the international market is coming back, all the dis distribution and normal distribution is also is also coming back. The tour operators are coming back with their operations. The OTAs are having more reservations. So I believe that the share of the direct is come is is going to decrease a bit, but this is keeping a strong level uh, higher than it was in 2019. That's mm -hmm. what I'm, I'm expecting for for this year. Mm -hmm. And also, as the OTAs obviously ramp up their marketing investment for this year, what do you think, or how do you expect hotels? What is it they're going to need to do in, to ensure that they can maintain that direct channel strength? Of course, they, they, they need to be very active on digital marketing. It's very important that uh, they have a strong presence on with the tools that the digital marketing gives to, 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 to the hotels nowadays. And to have, of course, a good, uh, a good booking engine and a good cooperation with the companies that are providing them that those tools for the hotels. That's important that uh, uh, day by day, that there's always a, a good involvement between the, the the team, the hotel team, the e-commerce hotel team, and the digital marketing team at the hotels with the companies with with, with whom they are cooperating, developing all these campaigns, all the, all these these strategies to to work on the on the direct bookings. And um, I believe that a, a lot, lot, of course. We have two different worlds in the in the hotel distribution. We have the global brands that they have they are very active and they have they have a presence and they have they have a very well known brand all, all over the world. And after we have the regional regional and national brands, they are, they are they are not so strong on with the with the presence of on the on the international markets. Uh, but uh, nowadays, with with the tools that uh, that uh, the market give to the to the to the all the hotel companies, I believe that we can be much more active and with a bigger presence that uh, we were able to do that we were able to do ten years ago. So mm. the tools are much better for for independent hotels or for small hotel chains that they were some years ago. Okay. Wonderful. And you also, when we started the session today, you spoke briefly about events and, and mice, how that seems to, seems to be improving. Um, and the sentiment from the report is that actually 73% of the hoteliers uh, surveyed expected in-person events to resume fully in the near future. So I'd like to also get your opinion on how important are trade shows such as WTM for hoteliers in in this in 2022, and what is it that hoteliers should be doing to make the most of those events? Uh, of course, uh, when we speak about uh, about uh, events, about uh, tra travel travel exhibitions like World Travel Market, uh, we know that uh, uh, on uh, on our sales plan on on the last years. Uh, the big three travel exhibitions, uh, the big three European travel exhibitions like ITB, Fitur, and World Travel Market have been always very important because we work on a on an industry that uh, personal connections are quite important, and uh, those exhibitions 
were our tool to do networking and to to connect with the with the distribution channels and to do our networking and promote our products. On the last years, uh, I believe that all all those uh, fairs uh, were losing a bit of importance, and they are being replaced by uh, by events that are more segmented, like. Uh, Workshops, roadshows, sales calls that uh, the, the hotels can target uh, on a, on a segment way, like uh, mice workshops, like uh, golf travel exhibitions, like sales calls more connected to the mice or to other to other segments. And the, and the trend will be that uh, to, to, on the marketing plan, on the sales plan of a hotel company. Uh, all, all events more segmented will be more important than those travel exhibitions. But uh, but I believe that for the rebound, and we need to reconnect a lot on the next uh, two years, uh, to be in our travel market or, or to be in Fitur, and Fitur was last week, and was a big surprise, the level of connection and level of contacts that we had over there. I think to reconnect, uh, it will be important to be on 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 a, on a World Travel Mark on 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 Fitur or, or ITB because we need to rebuild our our context. We need to rebuild our network, and those exhibitions will give will give us the the way of doing this quicker and to be in touch with a lot of distribution channels that we need to be. Because all, also the people that work on a tour operator, on a travel agent, on a mice agent, or on a golf tour operator, a lot of people change. And we need to, to be in touch with the new people to, 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 to see uh, old contacts that we have for many years and to be together soon and to be together to, to start uh, new, new operations and to, to, to work together to rebuild the occupancy of the hotels and to, to, to in the next future to have an increase on the on the figures to have an increase on the occupancy of our of our of our destinations. Absolutely, and Pedro, you got up here the question of the month uh, in terms of yeah. actual uh, the, the thoughts. Yeah. I think well, it's very significant, yeah, so, right? So what we're seeing is, and and obviously, especially on the great hotels of the world side, we do you know sales calls and. And events with hoteliers and, and buyers yeah, right. and, and meeting planners and so on. And we've performed already two in the UK this year, right? So this year, this week we performed one, and last week we performed another one. So we had five hotels in total that traveled to the UK to meet meeting planners. So I think yeah. hoteliers are very Don't confident. Them. Don't That's right. Them. Yeah. <laughs> I think hoteliers are very confident. I think, as Pedro was saying, um, they want to rebuild the networks that they had, but also build new networks because the world has changed, right? And, and, and to do so and to have really sort of consistent visibility into future demand, you need to have personal relationships with, with you know, these planners, the channels, the, the, the partners. And, and I think everybody's dying to jump on a plane. I think yeah. what's happening with the, the lift of travel restrictions, which is great news in the last couple of days, we just had, you know, Good news after good news, right? I remember when the pandemic started, I said, this is going to be bad news after bad news. I believe 2022 is going to be good news after good news, right? Mm -hmm. So, we're, you know, we have the, the lift of the testing requirements in, in Europe. We have Denmark saying no more masks anywhere, right? We have the UK saying no tests needed. So I think everybody's dying to jump on a plane and, and go somewhere, and that's why, I'm sorry, um, that's why I have a slide here that shows this is on the books as of yesterday, right? As of the 25th of January, the dotted blue line is 2019, the gray line is 2021, and the green line is 2022. Yeah. So the first half, this is on the books, obviously. This could all be sure. canceled. I, I, I want to, I wanna, you know, still yep. say that. But the first half is sort of halfway through from 2021 to 2019. It's actually 73% of 2019, but it's over five times 
what we saw in 2021 for the first half, so January through June. But I think also the, the, the interesting news is actually the second half of the year is at 117% of 2019. So we have more occupancy right now for the second half of the year than we had on the 25th of January of 2019. So I think this is really sort of encouraging news that the demand is here, that people are booking and they're looking, you know, actually with very solid numbers for the second half of the year and with, you know, comparatively to 2021, great numbers for the first half of the year. Yeah, that, that's very positive to see. And I totally agree with you in, in, in relation to positive news after positive news. I mean, yes, the UK also, I, I heard yesterday, have actually just lifted all mask mandates and they've um, lifted all restrictions on COVID now. So from what I understand, restaurants, pubs, bars, hospitality outlets can essentially go back to business now with no curfew limits, nothing at all. So I think the more we start to see that now with major... Uh, economies such as the UK economy, others are going to start to go, well, hey, look, you know, yeah. clearly, clearly we don't need to be like this anymore. So I think yeah. that might be a good sign. Just my question with this also on the books, Pedro, you might be, I don't know if you know the breakdown, but do you know what the breakdown is between domestic and international on those? Uh, it's it's probably 75% international, 25% domestic right now. Ah, okay, good. The reason why I ask is because, um, again, from the report, a lot of the hoteliers expected international travel to significantly contribute to 2022. So yeah. I wanted to get um, Pedro's um, uh, sentiment on that, whether he agreed with that and what his expectations for the international and domestic travel trends for this year will be. Um, do, you see, do you feel that we'll still see a huge domestic um, component for this year as well? No, of, of course, the domestic market here in Portugal is always important, even on a normal year, uh, like 2000, uh, 2018 or 2019, um, in the Algarve, uh, in our high season, July and August, 60% uh, of our guests were Portuguese, were domestic domestic market. So it's, it's been always an important market for us and the market that we care a lot. In the destinations like Lisbon is even uh, one of the most important markets and in Madeira as well. So we believe that we, has, we have a lot of domestic market. The share is going to decrease because that's normal because the international, international market is going to grow. Uh, but uh, I believe that uh, we have levels of share between 25 and 35 percent uh, depends depending on destination and uh, depending on the hotel uh, in some of the hotels like uh, city center hotels like we have the Dom Pedro Lisboa uh, the my segment is very very important and I believe that the recovery of my segment is going to happen just on the second half of the year so from maybe from May we can we can think that we are going to have the mice recovering and the the the, the, the visual market that's different so our first market in Lisbon with a share of 25 percent is the Brazilian market Brazilian start uh, got the authorization to come back to Europe in September so since they they were able to travel was a big demand on the from the brazilian market and that's really important for Lisbon because it's the first market for the city and i believe that starting now in february march uh, of uh, markets like brazilian and us we come back and uh, we are we are going to have a, a big increase on demand from 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 uh, from the, the, those markets uh, the, the, the European markets, we are already having a, a good, a good pickup uh, in the Algarve, in, in Madeira, our traditional markets like the UK, uh, Ireland, uh, and in Madeira, like the French market, the German market, are already with the very good levels of, of uh, reservations. So I believe that, uh, like Peter was saying, uh, we are... Um, very confident that we are having a very good year in the, in 2022 and starting right now, starting middle of February, I believe that we are going to have very good news. 
Very good. And Pedro, you've got a, a slide here that also shows uh, yeah, this break is, uh, this shows the inversion, right? That I think, you know, at the end of the year, actually hoteliers started thinking, okay, next year we're going to need the international market. And thank God the international market is, is coming back. So um, mm -hmm. again, I think it's, it's really, it's really good news in the sense that, you know, if, if travel restrictions, it really, honestly, the whole thing about travel is, I think most of the population is not comfortable with COVID, right? Um, they know what it is, at least in Europe, right? I'm talking about Europe and, and, and the US, right? They know what mm -hmm. it is, they're vaccinated and they're confident traveling. They know that, you know, there are no hospitals being overwhelmed in Europe right now. So, you know, next week I'm going to, to Denmark, right? Uh, zero problems, you know, traveling to Denmark, staying there for three days and coming back. So, so I do think that, you know, people are getting a lot more comfortable with what's going on and therefore um, things are just going to improve uh, over the course of the year. And one of the, 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 one of the uh, signals that we look for is the percentage of cancellations in a month, right? It's, you know, number of reservations done versus number of reservations canceled. I took, I, I started in June because we had obviously 200 and odd percent in, in March and, and April. But if you look here, we had very high levels of reservations um, through, you know, in 2020. Then, then we had sort of a, an interesting ramp up to the summer of 2021, but then we had new lockdowns. So if you see here, you know, the, all these things, all these peaks are related to lockdowns. And as mm -hmm. things you know, eased up now, uh, we're seeing we're going back to, to normal levels. And, and again, if governments don't get in the middle of this and don't panic, I think we're going to have a, a great 2022. That's, that's where my head's at, at least. Yeah, and I also think, obviously, and the, and the report reflected that, that hoteliers are showing cautious confidence in their own abilities now to manage the changing restrictions um, for the foreseeable future. So, Pedro, yeah. from your perspective, from a hotelier's perspective, what lessons have you guys learned from the past year that you believe could be helpful for today's future environment, for, for, for any potential changing environment that you might need to implement? Is is very difficult because um, what happened on the last years, we cannot see a, a trend that we can say that is going to be a trend that is going to happen on the on the years that are, are coming on, on the future. And uh, I hope that the things we are going to be completely different because, like you were saying, all the government um, measures that. Uh, were were set in place by a lot of European and world governments. Uh, sometimes were 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 the, were the panic button, and we hope that things are not going to happen again. What we learned that is not we cannot we cannot plan so much in advance like we were doing on the on the on the past because nowadays things are changing so quick and so shortly. That we need to 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 plan our our activities and uh, to forecast our revenue uh, with uh, much less time that we we used to do in the in the past. So I believe that it's going to give us more flexibility. It's going to bring us more 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 time to to think about our activities but you need to 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 put them in place more quicker so sometimes we were planning in a, one year in advance what we are going to do in sales activities or what we are going to do in in marketing and nowadays we need maybe to plan one month or two months just in advance and that's a lesson that we learned and that's a lesson we are going to keep for the next two years at least okay Excellent. Are you finding from um, from your operational standards as well, Pedro, that you've made significant adjustments that you will keep now that things start to come back to normal or, or will you start to regress back to the way things were done perhaps pre-pandemic? Well, I, I think what, what Pedro just said is, is really critical, right? I think uh, what, we, what we've always preached to our hotels, given that we're so focused on the digital side of things, is... Um, that people need to be flexible and agile, right? And the reality is um, 
the, the, the pandemic really show that if you're not agile and if you're not open to open and close quickly, if you're not open, you know, able to have flexible cancellation policies, and if you're not able to adjust to changing market demand, right? Because sometimes it's like, okay, um, Germany closed, but the UK opened up. So I need to be able to have offers that are, you know, for the UK market. So I think this n notion of agility is something that um, I think everybody in sales and marketing at hotels understands now. And, and that I think will drive more adoption of technology because it's just, you're going to need more signals, right? Of, okay, this is changing. I, I, sh I should do something, right? People are now booking for April a lot, right? So, mm -hmm. so what should I, should I do an early booking uh, promotion or should I offer something special for April so that I can capture that demand now and, and lock it in, right? Uh, on the other hand, on the books is really on the books, right? It's people used to sort of count on the reservations that were on the books. Now, you know, people are getting to, maybe I should do a 14 day cancellation policy. I don't want to go all the way to non, um, you know, non-refundable, maybe, maybe a 14 day cancellation policy so that I have some time to recover the demand if I get mass cancellations like we do sometimes. So I think uh, the industry is changing. Um, we're not going to go back to 2019, right? Where it was up and up and up and up and just confidence, confidence, mm -hmm. confidence. Uh, but I, and, and people are going to be more agile, but I think they're going to be smarter, right? And they're going to look at the bottom line and what does this add to my bottom line? And should I do this deal or not? And, 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 and so I think, uh, I think the industry itself got a lot smarter through the pandemic. Yeah, that's a very good point, actually. I think things, people and, and operations did get a lot smarter through the pandemic. And I think should there be another one that comes in the future that we, our response to it will, I would expect, to be significantly different and I think a lot more effective than... than yeah. um, and I don't say that in a, in a negative or a critical way because I think everybody did the best they could in the circumstances. Mm -hmm. But I think now that we've gone through this dramatic shift in, in business and operations i think should it happen again people are going to be like oh yeah no we're good with this we've we've gone through yeah. this we know what to do um and they'll also as you said hopefully be, be putting in technologies that will help them be able to make that transition quickly and effectively so i wanted, I wanted to bring up just one other point right uh which is sort of more good news i think um we are seeing um corporate really bouncing back, obviously not at the level of leisure, right? Leisure is almost 100% of 2019. We're here at 50% of 2019, but that's 4x what we saw in, in, in 2021, right? So, so and uh, I have here, uh, it all started at the beginning of January, and I have here just a quote from an article from Citibank and their analysts. They doubled, they double upgraded the shares of Lufthansa from sell to buy, because they believe that corporate travel is coming back and transit planning is coming back. And again, these are really good news for city center hotels, which have been the ones that have suffered mostly through the pandemic. And you know, while it's not total recovery, there will be some recovery in corporate travel and the Americans coming back also means they're gonna to travel to gateway cities, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that that's really sort of, again, all the signals are there that we're going to have a really good 2022, I think. Yeah. I, I, Pedro, do you also see that from your perspective as well in terms of yeah. corporate pickup? Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, like I said, uh, we have a uh, hotel in Lisbon City Center. is a hotel with 266 rooms and uh, our occupants split between different segments. So, of course, groups are 50% of our business and uh, divided between the, the mice and the visual groups. And of course, co individual corporates are very, very important for us. And um, I think that this year, the things are completely different than they were on the last year. We are seeing uh, a demand, we are seeing requests, requests for proposals that were not appearing last year. So the things will be completely different from, from February. Nowadays, people in the Lisbon city center are a bit disappointed because they are looking for the forecast. Things are not so good, but we, I'm really positive. I think that the, 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 the change is going to be really quick. And uh, in two weeks, few weeks, this pickup is going to be big and completely different than we had till, till this moment. 
So things are coming back. The corporate market is there. So it's starting to, to book and uh, even a lot of other other segments uh, like the European re re leisure groups and even some uh, Brazilians and the South Americans, even North Americans, they are they are coming back to to, to the to European capitals, and uh, so it's going to be a, a, a good year uh, for. It's not going to be like uh, like it's going to be on a resort destination. I believe that the, some of the resort destinations they will have figures very similar to 2019, but the city, the city hotels are going to be a, a very positive year as well. Yeah, definitely. And I also think, you know, to, we saw last year a significant investment made into the t technology side of this industry. We saw mm -hmm. companies raise tremendous funds and even hotel companies themselves are investing in locations. You know, for example, Marriott is investing 700 million into Melbourne alone in Australia. And I think that says if anything, that there is market confidence. There is confidence that we will come back and yeah. people wouldn't be investing these funds if they felt that the industry as a whole had no future. So there's no doubt about that. We definitely do. And we will see things come back. It's just going to be perhaps in a different perspective from, from before. But that's not a bad thing either. Things change and we, through change, we see uh, improvements. We th see mm -hmm. things better from it. So I think that's good. Uh, Pedro, do you have any other slides that you want to go through before we before we? No, I, I think, I, I, think uh, I think this is it. Let me see if I have here anything that that might be. Uh, so the, the only thing so is that um, what we saw is that the relative um, importance of uh, you know what do you think will 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 happen in with you know ADR and marketing spend and direct bookings. It's always been you know. Hoteliers have been sort of very confident on direct bookings, um, confident on ADR, less so on marketing spend. And we see that actually as they get more confident to the future, everything lifts. And if they get less confident about the future, everything goes down. I, I do wonder, as, as Pedro was saying, how the marketing spend is going to be in 2022, because it's going to be... A, Probably people are, are planning one, two months ahead, but not a lot longer right now. Because, you know, if, if, uh, if I plan a trip to Brazil and something happens, like Pedro I know has a trip in February to Brazil where he's going to do a road show, right? Uh, and that's planned for sure. And most, uh, you know, most probably is going to happen. But if something happens, then you have to cancel it and then you have to change. So... I do think that the marketing spend is going to be tentative still in the first half of the year. But if we're going and, and, and confidence builds over the year, we're going to start planning, planning longer. And my only word of the wisdom is we don't know what's going to happen in the next winter. Right. So I think those really long term plans, nobody's ever going to do them again, at least not for a while. Mm -hmm. Right. Because it's just too hard. Right. When, mm -hmm. when the, the general manager comes along in August and says, so what's the plan for 2023? Everybody's going to say, you know, I don't know how the winter is going to look like. Mm -hmm. Right. That's mm -hmm. my that's my take on it. Yeah, you're completely right. Uh, I agree with you. It's going to be really difficult to plan. I believe that low season is going to be much more difficult than it used to be. And we are going to have that for several years, for sure. Yeah. Okay, great. Wonderful. Um, also, for our audience, if anyone has any comments or questions before we finalize, please drop them into the comments section and we'll put them into the stream. Um, and the other thing that I failed to mention at the beginning of the session was that the report, I know Leah put it onto the screen um, for people to see, but the report can be found at uh, guestcentric.com slash pulse report download. Uh, Leah can also put the link back up on the screen uh, for those that are interested in downloading the report for themselves. And obviously for any hoteliers that don't already contribute to the report that would like to, um, Leah can also pop the link up there where you can access the, the survey so that you can put the information in. Obviously, the more data that we get, the more richer these, uh, these reports are. I mean, they're already incredibly rich and they've got a lot of, of, of really important information in there. And I think Pedro, you and your team are doing a great job with these. So thank you for, for putting them together. They're certainly um, very, very helpful.
Well, thank you very much. And thank you, Pedro, for uh, joining us here. It's, it's been really thank wonderful. You. Thank, you. thank you very much for the invitation. Congratulations for the great job you are doing, Pedro. That was really very interesting figures. And I believe that with all this uh, information, we are, we are on a better way of taking some decisions for the future. Exactly. And I think that's the point, right? We want to share information so that people can make better decisions. Um, exactly. All right, gentlemen. Well, thank you both again for your time. Highly appreciated. Mm -hmm. Lovely to see you, Pedro Calaco, again. And lovely to, to meet you and, and talk with you, Pedro Ribeiro, today. So thanks yeah. both for joining yeah. us. And of thank course, you. the viewer. Thank, thank you. you for watching. Thanks, thanks for tuning in. Until right. next time. Next <laughs> yep. Bye for now. <laughs>